Section 9 of Salads, Sandwiches, and Chafing Dish Dainties. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Vittoria Khan. Salads, Sandwiches, and Chafing Dish Dainties by Janet Mackenzie Hill. Chapter 9 Various Compound Salads. Give us the luxuries of life, and we will dispense with its necessities. Motley. Three several salads have I sacrificed, bedewed with precious oil and vinegar. Beaumont and Fletcher. Sweetbread and Cucumber Salad. Arrange the leaves of a head of cabbage lettuce loosely upon a serving dish, without destroying its shape. Have ready a pair of sweetbreads cooked in salted, acidulated water twenty minutes, and cooled and cut in small cubes and marinated. Also the same quantity of cucumber cut in dice, chilled in ice water, and dried upon a cloth. Drain the French dressing from the sweetbread and scatter the bits of sweetbread and cucumber through the lettuce. Press three-fourths a cup of firm jelly mayonnaise through a pastry bag with a small tube, in little stars here and there, throughout the lettuce, and serve at once. Sweetbread and Cucumber Salad Number 2 Cook, marinate, and drain the sweetbreads as before. Mix with an equal quantity of cucumber cut in dice, and then with cream dressing. Line the inner side of lettuce nests with slices of radish, one overlapping another. Do not remove the pink skin from the radish. Put in a spoonful of the salad and garnish each nest with a small radish cut to resemble a flower. Chicken Salad Use two parts of cold cooked chicken to one part of celery. Marinate and drain the chicken, add the celery, and mix with mayonnaise or boiled dressing. Arrange the salad in nests of lettuce leaves and put a pimola in the center of each nest. Chicken Salad Number 2 Prepare the salad as before. Dispose in a mound on a bed of lettuce leaves and mask with mayonnaise. By the use of stoned olives cut in halves, divide the surface into quarters. Fill two opposite sections with whites of eggs chopped fine, a third with capers or olives chopped fine, and the fourth with sifted yolks of eggs. Garnish with lettuce and curled celery. French Chicken Salad Cook the meats of English walnuts in well-seasoned chicken stock until tender. Remove the brown skin and break in pieces. When cold, mix with chicken and celery, and proceed as in preceding recipes. The walnuts give the salad a flavor similar to that produced in France by the use of truffles. Chicken and Fresh Mushroom Salad Peel mushroom caps, break in pieces, and saute in melted butter five or six minutes with a slice of onion. Add chicken liquor or hot water, and let simmer until tender. Remove from the liquor, cover, and set aside to cool. Add the liquor and the peelings and stalks of the mushrooms to the liquid in which the chicken is to be cooked. Use the chicken and mushrooms with celery or lettuce in any recipe for chicken salad. Chicken Salad Number 3 Arrange the salad upon the center of the dish and mask with mayonnaise, then with pastry bag and tube Pipe the dressing in some fanciful design. Surround with a border of aspic jelly, tinted a delicate green. The jelly may be cut in blocks or triangles, or into small cubes, and then massed about the salad. Cut the aspic in a cold room. First, dip the knife in hot water and wipe dry. Chicken Salad Number 4 Cut one cucumber and one bunch of round radishes in thin slices, and add two-thirds a cup of shredded celery. Season with four tablespoonfuls of oil, 
two tablespoonfuls of vinegar or lemon juice, half a teaspoonful of salt, and a dash of paprika. Put on a bed of shredded lettuce or on heart leaves of lettuce, cover with three cups of chicken cut in cubes, and marinate it an hour or more with four tablespoonfuls of oil, two tablespoonfuls of lemon juice or vinegar, half a teaspoonful of salt, and a dash of white pepper. Mask with mayonnaise. Arrange some bits of celery, an inch and a half in length and curled on one end, about the salad, with a bit of yolk of egg in the center of each. Or, instead of the celery and yolk of egg, use sliced radishes, do not remove the red skin, having the slices overlap one another. Finish the top with tuft of lettuce or curled celery and yolk of egg. Mushroom Salad with Medallions of Chicken Bone a chicken, fill with forcemeat, and cook until tender in stock. Then, press between two dishes until cold. Cut in slices and stamp in rounds. Stamp out an equal number of rounds from cooked tongue. Spread these with, quote, green butter, end quote. See green butter sandwiches and place the rounds of chicken evenly on the tops. Coat these with white chaudfroid sauce, and decorate in some design with truffles, ham, or tongue. When the sauce has set, brush over the medallions with aspic jelly, cold but not set. When thoroughly cold, stamp out with a round cutter. Drain and dry a can of white button mushrooms. Toss them about in cold aspic until they are well coated. When the jelly has become fixed about them, pile high in the center of a serving dish. Arrange the medallions about them, resting on delicate leaves of lettuce. Serve mayonnaise or tartare sauce with the salad. Sweetbreads may be substituted for the chicken and fresh mushrooms for the canned. Mousse de poulet salad Scald one cup of milk, cream, or well-reduced chicken stock. The last is preferable. Beat the yolks of three eggs slightly. Add one-fourth a teaspoonful each of common salt and celery salt and a dash of paprika and cook as a boiled custard. Remove from the fire and add one-fourth a package of gelatin, one tablespoonful of granulated gelatin, softened in one-fourth cup of chicken liquor or water. Strain over half a cup of cooked chicken, white meat, chopped and pounded in a mortar and passed through a sieve. Stir over ice water until the mixture is perfectly smooth and begins to set. Then fold into it one cup of whipped cream. Turn into a ring mold and, when chilled and well set, turn on to a bed of lettuce and fill in the center with equal parts of celery and english walnuts blanched sliced and mixed with a french dressing the half cup of chicken well pressed down should weigh four ounces the chicken broth should be strong and well flavored either one cup of whipped cream or one cup of cream whipped may be used the latter gives a firmer mousse more pronounced in flavor the former a mousse of a lighter and more delicate consistency, and one more delicate in flavor. Mousse de poulet number two. Mold the mousse in small cups. Turn out onto a slice of chilled tomato resting upon a lettuce leaf. Garnish with mayonnaise dressing, decorating both the tomato and the mousse. Mousse de poulet number three. Mold the mousse in a ring mold and fill in the center with equal parts of cucumber or asparagus tips and diced sweetbread. Marinate the sweetbread with French dressing and drain thoroughly before mixing with the cucumber or asparagus. Garnish with mayonnaise dressing. Mousse de poulet number four. Fill in the center of the ring with diced cucumbers and sliced radishes mixed with cream dressing. Garnish with cream dressing using pastry bag and tube and radishes cut to resemble roses. Mousse de poulet number five. 
fill in the center of the ring with mushrooms and sweetbread dressed with a french dressing if the button mushrooms canned are used cut in quarters if fresh mushrooms are at hand remove the stems and peel the caps break into pieces and saute in a little hot butter then add hot water or stock and let simmer until tender fifteen or twenty minutes drain and chill before using turkey and chestnut salad prepare the chestnuts as previously directed using twice as much turkey meat light or dark cut into small cubes serve with lettuce and french boiled or mayonnaise dressing as desired marinate and drain the meat before adding the nuts duck and olive salad cut the meat from a duck in small pieces and slice pomolas very thin use two tablespoonfuls of pomolas to a cup of meat serve on a bed of cress with a french dressing duck and orange salad slice the oranges lengthwise use twice as much flesh as fruit dress with oil salt and paprika and serve on lettuce leaves ham salad soak half a tablespoonful of granulated gelatin in one tablespoonful and a half of cold water and dissolve in three-fourths a cup of hot chicken liquor strain over one cup of chopped ham and stir until the mixture begins to thicken then fold in one cup of thick cream beaten stiff add also a few grains of paprika and salt if needed mold in a ring mold and when set and cold turn from the mold fill in the center with lettuce arranged like a cup and fill the cup with mayonnaise or serve with french dressing bacon salad cut six or eight slices of tender bacon into small squares and fry until they are delicately browned then drain on soft paper heat six tablespoonfuls of the fat and two tablespoonfuls of vinegar or lemon juice beat together the yolks of three eggs and one-fourth a teaspoonful each of paprika and mustard and cook with the fat and vinegar over hot water until the mixture thickens slightly when the dressing is cold cut a head of lettuce into narrow ribbons toss the lettuce and bits of bacon together and mix with the dressing serve at once italian salad miss cohen ingredients two herrings soaked in milk overnight three boiled potatoes cut in very small dice two tablespoonfuls of cucumber pickles chopped fine one tablespoonful of capers chopped fine two small boiled beets cut fine half a pound one cup of cold roast chicken cut fine half a pound one cup of boiled tongue cut fine two apples pared and finely chopped two carrots cooked and finely chopped one celery root cooked and chopped half a cup of pecan nuts broken fine a little onion juice method mix the ingredients together thoroughly add mayonnaise to moisten well serve on a flat dish mask the top with mayonnaise then divide into squares like a checkerboard using fine shredded pimento or pickled beet to mark the divisions fill in alternate squares with sifted yolk of hard-boiled egg and the remaining squares with chopped white of egg garnish the edge with parsley and set in the center half a hard-boiled egg cut lengthwise in points and filled with capers pate de foie gras molded in aspic cover the bottoms of small-sized timbal molds with a little aspic jelly decorate the jelly with bits of royal custard and capers cover with more aspic then add alternately layers of pate de foie gras and aspic until the mold is filled turn on to shredded lettuce and garnish with mayonnaise using pastry bag and tube arrange on individual dishes so as not to disarrange the dressing and serving or garnish with a chopped cucumber dressed with french dressing spinach and tongue salad 
ingredients one quarter a peck of spinach one tablespoonful of lemon juice one fourth a teaspoonful of salt a dash of paprika one tablespoonful of oil or butter slices of cold tongue sauce tartare method cook the spinach in salted boiling water until tender drain and chop very fine and season with salt pepper oil and lemon juice press into small well buttered molds or cups have ready thin round slices of cold boiled or braised tongue the slices a trifle larger than the cups of spinach when the spinach is cold turn it from the molds on to the rounds of tongue and press a star of sauce tartare on the top of each mold garnish with parsley and slices of lemon spinach and egg salad prepare and mold the spinach as in the preceding recipe have ready also some cold boiled eggs and mayonnaise turn the spinach from the molds on to nests of shredded lettuce dispose chain fashion around the base of the spinach the whites of the eggs cut in rings and press a star of mayonnaise in the center of each ring pass the yolks through a sieve and sprinkle over the tops of the mounds and place above this the round ends of the whites marguerite salad arrange garden cress on a serving dish in the center dispose whites of hard-boiled eggs cut in eighths lengthwise to resemble the petals of a flower and sift the yolks into the center when ready to serve sprinkle with french dressing and toss together easter salad with the smooth sides of butter hands roll neufchatel cheese into small egg shapes cut long radishes into straws and season with french dressing scatter the straws in lettuce nests arrange the eggs in the nests sprinkle with dressing and fleck with chopped parsley or paprika easter salad number two arrange flat nests of shredded lettuce on individual plates cut a five cent neufchatel cheese in three pieces roll each piece into a ball and flatten to resemble the white of a poached egg having the cheese about one-fourth an inch in thickness these may be shaped upon a plate and then removed carefully with a spatula to the nests of lettuce with pastry bag and plain tube put a mound of mayonnaise on the center of each cake of cheese to represent the yolk of an egg serve thoroughly chilled a dash of pepper paprika preferred may decorate the top of the dressing country salad cut cold boiled corned beef or tongue into thin strips and pile in the center of a serving dish cook potato balls in meat broth until tender blanch and cool roll in mayonnaise or boiled dressing and dispose about the meat about these put a ring of celery cut fine then cooked carrot and turnip cut in straws garnish with parsley and cucumber pickles cut in fans serve with additional dressing orange and litchi nut salad peel the oranges and cut them into lengthwise slices crush the shells of the nuts take out the meats and remove the stones cut the nut meats in halves mix the nuts with oil a tablespoonful to a cup and sprinkle the orange slices with oil add also a little lemon juice if the oranges are sweet garnish with slices of orange from which the skin has not been taken also if desired with lettuce dressed with french dressing the oil and lettuce may be omitted using sugar in place little however will be needed as the nuts are sweet tasting much like raisins green and white salad cut cooked chicken or sweetbreads in half inch cubes remove the skin and seeds from white grapes and cut each grape in halves cut tender blanched celery stalks in small pieces take equal portions of celery and meat and half as much of seeded grapes mix with french dressing the meat should stand in the dressing an hour or more when ready to serve 
serve in nests of lettuce dispose a little white mayonnaise or cream dressing on each nest garnish with halves of blanched pistachio nuts end of chapter nine recorded by vittoria khan section ten of salads sandwiches and chafing dish dainties this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by betty b salads sandwiches and chafing dish dainties by janet mackenzie hill fruit and nut salads fat olives and pistachios fragrant nut and the pines tasteful apples fruit salad sweet to serve with cake peel and slice four bananas also four oranges lengthwise carefully removing pith and seeds dissect half a ripe pineapple taking the pulp from the core in small pieces with a silver fork haul and wash a part of a basket of strawberries arrange the fruit in the salad bowl making each layer smaller than the preceding pour over the dressing given below and serve thoroughly chilled dressing for fruit salad sweet boil one cup of sugar and half a cup of water five minutes then pour on to the beaten yolks of three eggs return to the fire and cook over hot water stirring constantly until thickened slightly cool and add the juice of two lemons half a cup of wine may be used in the place of the lemon juice retaining one tablespoonful of the lemon juice fruit salad june pare lengthwise a ripe pineapple and remove the eyes with a fork dislodge from the hard center the single fruits the lines left by the bracts will indicate the places where the division should be made slice lengthwise three sweet oranges after removing the peel and white skin peel and slice two bananas and cut in halves lengthwise one cup of strawberries if the fruit be sweet use the juice of half a lemon otherwise omit it beat to an emulsion one-fourth a cup of olive oil one tablespoonful of honey and if needed the lemon juice toss the fruit together or separately in the dressing and serve on delicate leaves of lettuce the most striking effect is produced by dressing each kind of fruit separately thus massing each color by itself when new figs are seasonable they may be used in fruit salads to take the place of the honey if the pineapple be of large size more dressing will be required fruit and nut salad peel neatly three oranges and slice them lengthwise also cut three bananas in thin slices skin and seed half a pound of white grapes and blanch and slice the meats of one-fourth a pound of english walnuts serve very cold on lettuce leaves dressed with four tablespoons of oil two tablespoons of lemon juice less if the oranges are sour and half a teaspoonful of salt fruit and nut salad number two skin and seed half a pound of white grapes blanch and slice half a pound of english walnuts or almonds toss with four tablespoonfuls of oil one-fourth a teaspoonful of salt and two tablespoonfuls of lemon juice serve in nests of lettuce garnish the nests with maraschino cherries cherry salad mrs peterson marinate as many hazelnuts as cherries with plenty of oil half as much lemon juice as oil and a little salt one or two hours put a nut in the place of the stone in the cherries sprinkle with oil and a very little lemon juice and serve in lettuce nests fruit salad winter peel two oranges with a sharp knife cut between the pulp and the skin and remove the section entire slice the meats of one-fourth a pound of english walnuts of one-fourth a pound of figs select a few for a garnish and cut the rest in thin slices slice three bananas toss half the ingredients with two or three tablespoonfuls of oil and if the oranges are sweet toss again with one tablespoonful of lemon juice arrange in a mound on a salad dish put the rest of the fruit each kind separately on the mound in sections garnish the edge and top with heart leaves of lettuce and add stars of mayonnaise and candied cherries here and there orange and walnut salad this is a particularly good salad to serve with game select fine oranges remove the peel and every particle of white skin 
and slice very thin lengthwise slice english walnuts blanched or plain to each pint of orange slices add half a pint scant of the sliced nuts dress with three tablespoonfuls of oil one-fourth a teaspoonful of salt and if the oranges are particularly sweet a tablespoonful of lemon juice serve on a bed of watercress or lettuce celery and chestnut salad shell and blanch the chestnuts then boil about fifteen minutes or until tender drain and cool when cool cut into quarters add an equal quantity of fine sliced celery dress with french dressing and serve on lettuce leaves sliced pimentos may be added apple celery and english walnut salad peel and cut the apples in small cubes blanch the nuts and break in pieces and cut the celery in thin slices marinate the apple and nuts with oil and lemon juice half an hour drain add the celery and mayonnaise dressing and serve in cups made by removing the pulp from red apples cut the edges of the apples in small van dykes keep fresh in cold water until ready to serve orange and banana salad sweet stir the juice of two oranges half a cup of sherry wine one tablespoonful of lemon juice half a cup of sugar and the unbeaten white of an egg over the fire until the boiling point is reached let simmer slowly ten minutes strain through a cheesecloth and when thoroughly chilled pour over three bananas and three oranges sliced and mixed together in a salad bowl sprinkle with half a cup of desiccated coconut serve thoroughly chilled fig and nut salad slice pulled figs cooked and cooled and mix with them a few slices of walnuts or blanched almonds serve with french dressing made of claret and lemon juice instead of vinegar or with the cream dressing in using the cream dressing mix the ingredients with a little of the dressing and dispose additional dressing here and there using the forcing bag and tube when available fresh figs are preferable to those that have been cooked grapefruit salad cut the chilled fruit in halves crosswise and take out the pulp with a spoon dress with french dressing the juice of the grapefruit may be used in the place of other acid and mayonnaise in the place of french dressing serve on lettuce leaves or return to the skin from which the pulp was removed the edge of the grapefruit cup may be cut in van dykes or otherwise ornamented turquoise salad mix together equal parts of celery and tart apple cut in match-like pieces and one or two pimentos cut in similar pieces dress with mayonnaise made light with whipped cream serve in nests of lettuce turquoise salad number two use pineapple in the place of the apple serve in a mound on a bed of lettuce leaves garnish with stars cut from the pimentos with french cutter curled celery and heart leaves of celery salad chiffonade see two green peppers boil two or three minutes then cut in shreds shred the light and dark leaves of a head of lettuce or endive separately cut three tomatoes in shreds remove the peel and skin from one large grapefruit serve with french dressing seasoning and then arranging each article separately upon the serving dish having a circle of light and then dark green material under the edge peach and almond salad blanch the almonds and cut in thin slices chill the peaches peel and cut in slices use one-fifth as much in bulk of sliced nuts as sliced peaches serve with french dressing or with mayonnaise made white with whipped cream garnish the edge with delicate lettuce leaves and serve at once peach salad english style cut ripe fine flavored peaches into quarters after removing the skins cover with champagne thoroughly chilled and sprinkle with tea rose petals serve at once peach strawberry and cherry salad london style let a large handful of fresh rose petals stand an hour or two in a cool place in a cup of hungarian wine strain out the leaves and pour the wine over a quart of mixed fruit peaches pared and cut in quarters strawberries hauled and cut in halves and cherries stoned all thoroughly chilled let a handful of rose petals stand an hour or two in a cup of thick cream then strain the cream sweeten lightly with powdered sugar whip to a stiff froth and use as a garnish for the fruit grapefruit pineapple and pimento salad cut a large grapefruit in halves and remove the pulp with a sharp knife to avoid crushing it 
remove half the pulp of a large pineapple from the core with a fork after carefully removing the unedible outside dress with white mayonnaise and serve upon crisp lettuce hearts garnish with tiny bits of pimento two d omit the pimento lettuce and mayonnaise and dress with sherry wine and sugar for a christmas salad use the first formula and can pineapple if the fresh be not at hand dispose the dressed pineapple and grapefruit upon shredded lettuce having a circle of heart leaves around the edge dot here and there with small stars cut from the red pimento with a french cutter or chop the pimento fine and dispose in the shape of a large five-pointed star in the center of the dish end of section ten Section 11 of Salads, Sandwiches, and Chafing Dish Dainties. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Diana Schmidt. Salads, Sandwiches, and Chafing Dish Dainties by Janet Mackenzie Hill. How to Prepare and Use Aspic Jelly to make aspic for molding or decorating a fish salad use stock prepared from chicken or veal or from fish for chicken veal or sweetbread salad use chicken or veal stock or a light colored consomme in an emergency aspic may be made from the prepared extracts of beef or from bouillon capsules aspic is often tinted delicately to harmonize with a particular color scheme a light green aspic has been found quite effective recipe to one quart of highly seasoned stock freed from all fat add the juice of a lemon a bay leaf half a cup of wine and one box of gelatin soaked in a cup of cold water beat into the mixture the slightly beaten whites and crushed shells of two eggs heat to the boiling point stirring constantly and let boil five minutes after standing ten minutes skim off the froth etc and strain through a cheesecloth folded double and held in a colander aspic for garnishing pour the liquid jelly into a new tin to the depth of half an inch bring a napkin out of cold water and spread it smoothly over the meat board dip the pan in warm water and turn the jelly onto the napkin stamp in rounds diamonds or other fanciful shapes if blocks of greater thickness be required fill the pan to the required depth with the liquid aspic when turned from the mold cut in squares or diamonds with a knife wiped dry after having been dipped in hot water to chop jelly cut the jelly slowly first in one direction then in the opposite direction each piece whether large or small should be clean cut and distinct aspic melts or softens in a warm place and should not be taken from the mold until the time of serving and then it must be handled with care consomme for aspic jelly cut two pounds of beef from the under part of the round and two pounds of shin of veal into small pieces crack the bones in the shin place over the fire with two and a half quarts of cold water add one ounce of lean ham heat slowly and cook just below the boiling point two or three hours then add to the kettle a three-pound fowl and allow it to remain till tender put some marrow into the frying pan and when hot saute in it a small onion cut fine two tablespoonfuls each of chopped celery carrot and turnip add to the soup kettle removing the fowl together with a sprig each of parsley thyme and summer savory two bay leaves and a small blade of mace four cloves two peppercorns and one scant tablespoonful of salt let simmer about an hour and a half then strain and let cool chicken stock for aspic jelly put a four pound fowl and a few bits of veal from the neck over the fire in three pints of cold water heat slowly to the boiling point let boil five minutes 
then skim and let simmer until the fowl is nearly tender now add an onion and half a sliced carrot a stalk of celery a teaspoonful of sweet herbs tied in a bag with a sprig of parsley two cloves a blade of mace eight peppercorns and a teaspoonful of salt remove the fowl when tender and let the stock simmer until reduced to about one quart strain and set aside to become cool second stock for use in sauces etc break the bones from roasts add the tough or browned bits of meat and fat add also the flank ends from chops and steaks cut small there should always be a few bits of fresh meat and cover with cold water heat slowly and let simmer two or three hours then add for each two quarts of water used one-fourth a cup each of chopped onion and carrot two stalks of celery and a tomato cut small two teaspoonfuls of sweet herbs two sprigs of parsley browned in two tablespoonfuls of butter or drippings and cook about an hour strain and let cool stock will keep a day or two in summer and nearly a week in winter if the cake of fat that forms upon the top be left undisturbed fish stock for use in fish aspic or any fish dish cover the bones and trimmings from the fish that is to be used for the salad with cold water add if convenient the body bones of a lobster or two add also one or two pounds of an inexpensive fish and a pint of water for each pound of fish all must be fresh bring the water slowly to the boiling point and let simmer an hour then add for each quart of water one tablespoonful each of chopped onion and carrot a spring of parsley and one teaspoonful of sweet herbs sautéed delicately in two tablespoonfuls of butter season to taste with salt and cayenne aspic jelly from bouillon capsules etc put over the fire one-fourth a cup each of onion and carrot sautéed in two tablespoonfuls of butter two stalks of celery a bay leaf half a dozen peppercorns and two or three cloves with one quart of water add three bouillon capsules or three teaspoonfuls of beef extract not homemade dissolved in two cups of boiling water let simmer about half an hour then add one box of gelatin softened in one cup of cold water any additional flavoring desired and the slightly beaten white and crushed shell of one egg more shells will be advantageous bring slowly to the boiling point stirring constantly meanwhile and let simmer five minutes let stand in a hot place ten minutes then skim and strain through a cheesecloth folded double white chaudfroy sauce for coating joints of fowl or game or medallions of fowl tongue or sweetbreads to one pint of white sauce made of white stock add three-fourths a cup of aspic jelly and one tablespoonful of lemon juice let simmer until reduced to the consistency of very thick cream remove the butter from the top and let cool slightly before using end of section eleven Section 12 of Salads, Sandwiches, and Chafing Dish Dainties. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Diana Schmidt. Cheese dishes served with salads. Digestive cheese and fruit there sure will be. Ben Johnson. Cheese custard. Mrs. Diamond butter a baking dish put in a layer of bread cut in pieces one inch square with crust removed sprinkle thin sliced cheese over the bread dust with salt and paprika or a few grains of cayenne add other layers of bread and cheese seasoning as before using in all half a small loaf of bread one cup of cheese and half a teaspoonful of salt beat two eggs slightly add one pint of milk and pour the mixture over the bread and cheese bake about half an hour in a moderate oven cheese souffle 
cook together four tablespoonfuls of butter and two tablespoonfuls of flour into which have been sifted one-fourth a teaspoonful each of soda mustard and a few grains of cayenne add gradually half a cup of milk when the sauce boils remove from the fire and stir into it one cup of grated cheese half a pound and the yolks of three eggs beaten until light when well mixed fold in the stiffly beaten whites of three eggs bake in a buttered pudding dish in a moderate oven about twenty-five minutes or in individual dishes paper cases or china shirring cups about twelve minutes serve at once from the dish or dishes the souffle will stand up a little better if three-fourths a cup of milk be used in place of the half cup as given and half a cup of stale grated bread be added before the cheese but it will not be quite so delicate cheese ramekins individual souffle of cheese put four tablespoonfuls of butter and half a cup of water into a saucepan when these boil add half a cup of flour and a few grains each of salt and paprika cook and stir until the mixture cleaves from the pan turn into a mixing bowl and beat in two ounces of grated parmesan cheese then beat in one at a time two eggs on a well-buttered baking sheet shape the paste into flat circular pieces about an inch in diameter brush over the tops with beaten egg diluted with one or two tablespoonfuls of milk or water and put three or four dice of cheese on each bake about fifteen minutes serve very hot cheese straws roll plain or puff paste into a rectangular sheet one-fourth an inch thick sprinkle one half with grated cheese any kind of cheese will do but parmesan is preferred also add a few grains of cayenne and salt fold the other half over this and press the edges closely together fold again to make three layers turn halfway round pat and roll out to the thickness of one-fourth an inch sprinkle one half with cheese and proceed as before continue rolling and adding the cheese until to one cup and a half of flour from half to a whole cup of cheese has been used after the last rolling cut into bands half an inch wide or into rings and straws one-fourth an inch wide the straws and bands should be four or five inches in length and the rings large enough to hold three or four straws serve the bands piled in log cabin style on a doily covered plate if the paste be made expressly for the straws the cheese and cayenne may be mixed into the flour with the butter thus diminishing time in making bake in a moderate oven until delicately browned gnocchi a la romaine melt four tablespoonfuls of butter cook in it four tablespoonfuls each of cornstarch and flour and half a teaspoonful of salt then add gradually one pint of milk when thick and smooth stir in the beaten yolks of two eggs add four tablespoonfuls of grated parmesan cheese and spread on a buttered pan to cool just before serving cut the paste in shapes lay on a baking sheet and brown delicately in the oven cheese balls mix together thoroughly one cup and a half of grated cheese one tablespoonful of flour one-fourth a teaspoonful of salt and a few grains of cayenne then add the whites of three eggs beaten stiff shape in small balls and roll in cracker crumbs sifted or crushed to a fine meal fry in deep fat and drain on soft paper individual souffles of cheese iced mix half a cup of grated parmesan and one-fourth a cup of grated gruyere cheese and one-fourth a teaspoonful of paprika with two-thirds a cup of chicken aspic cold but not set stir over ice water until just beginning to form then fold into it one cup of whipped cream fasten strips of white paper around the paper souffle cases letting the strips rise an inch and a half above the cases fixing in place with sealing wax mucilage or a stitch 
fill the cases and the papers surrounding them with the cheese mixture and set them in a pail or mold that is thoroughly chilled press the cover down over a paper and pack in equal parts of ice and salt let stand an hour before serving remove the paper sprinkle the tops with buttered crumbs browned and serve at once cheese croquettes terrain ingredients three tablespoonfuls of butter one-fourth a cup of flour two-thirds a cup of milk yolks of two eggs one cup of mild cheese cut in small cubes one-half a cup of grated gruyere cheese salt and cayenne to taste method make a sauce of the butter flour and milk add the yolks slightly beaten and beat thoroughly add the grated cheese and when melted remove from the fire add the seasonings and cubes of cheese spread in a shallow pan to cool cut in any shape desired dip in crumbs then in egg and again in crumbs fry in deep fat and drain on brown paper cheese aigrettes ingredients half a cup of water one quarter cup of butter half a cup of flour two eggs with the yolk of a third a few grains of cayenne and salt two ounces one quarter a cup of grated parmesan cheese hot fat method boil the water and butter sift in the flour with the salt and cayenne stir and cook until the mixture cleaves from the side of the pan when the mixture has slightly cooled add the eggs one at a time beating in each egg thoroughly before another is added lastly add the cheese drop by teaspoonfuls into hot fat and fry a golden brown drain on soft paper and serve piled on a folded napkin cheese d'artois ingredients two tablespoonfuls of butter white of one egg yolks of two eggs salt and paprika two ounces of grated parmesan cheese one quarter a pound of plain or puff paste method cream the butter beat in the eggs and add the cheese with a few grains each of salt and paprika roll the pastry very thin and cut it into two rectangular pieces lay one of these pieces on a baking sheet and spread with the cheese mixture cover this with the second piece of pastry score with a knife in strips one inch wide and about three inches long brush over with beaten egg and bake about fifteen minutes cut out the strips while hot serve at once or reheat before serving pineapple cheese and crackers salad of lettuce with cheese and vegetable mesadoine cheese fritters slice thin half a dozen large tart apples select apples that cook quickly and prepare half as many thin slices of cheese beat up one or two eggs and season with salt mustard and pepper soak the cheese in the egg mixture then put each slice between two slices of apple sandwich style dip in the beaten egg saute in hot butter and serve hot salad of lettuce with cheese and vegetable mesadon mix together a ten cent cream cheese a canned pimento red cut in tiny cubes one-fourth a cup of small green string beans cut in cubes five olives chopped fine and enough cream to hold the mixture together when thoroughly mixed use a piece of paraffin or confectioner's paper to handle and give the mixture the original shape let stand in a cold place wrapped in the paper until ready to serve then dispose in the center of a salad dish lined with lettuce leaves dressed with french dressing slice the cheese with a silver knife before sending to the table at luncheon mayonnaise may be served in a dish apart end of section twelve section thirteen of salads sandwiches and chafing dish dainties this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by betty b salad sandwiches and chafing dish dainties by janet mackenzie hill part two sandwiches 
socrates brought philosophy from the clouds but the englishmen have dragged her into the kitchen Hegel. homer never entertained either guests or hosts with long speeches till the mouth of hunger be stopped sir philip sidney sandwiches a pale young man with feeble whiskers and a stiff white neckcloth came walking down the lane on sandwich having a lady that is on each arm thackeray vanity fair the term sandwich now applied to many a fanciful shaped and in case dainty was formerly used in speaking of two slices of bread with meat between in this sense the word had its origin about the end of the eighteenth century from the fact that the fourth earl of sandwich was so infatuated with the pleasures and excitement of the gaming table that he often could not leave it long enough to take meals with his family and on such occasions a butler was dispatched to him bearing slices of bread with meat between the fillings of savoury sandwiches may be placed between pieces of bread crackers pastry shoe paste or aspic jelly when preparing sweet sandwiches these same materials may be used as also lady fingers white or yellow macaroons or sweet wafers bread for sandwiches as a rule bread for sandwiches should be twenty-four hours old but fresh bread which is more pliable than stale is better adapted to this use when the sandwiches are to take the form of rolls or folds when stale bread is used for rolls or folds they must be ribbon tied or tiny japanese toothpicks may be made to keep them in shape the bread may be yeast or peptic bread it may be white or brown it is not even essential that the two bits of bread be of the same kind quaker rice whole wheat rye or graham bread is interchangeable with white or brown bread after selecting your loaf or loaves slice in even quarter inch slices then cut in squares triangles or fingers or stamp with a round or fanciful shaped cutter cutters can be obtained in heart club diamond and spade shape also in racket shape do not spread butter or filling upon the bread before it is cut from the loaf and into shape when so treated the butter or filling on the extreme edge of the bread is liable to soil the fingers or gloves that come in contact with it cream the butter using a small wooden spoon for the purpose and then it can be spread upon the most delicate bread without crumbling the filling anything appropriately eaten with the covering may be used for the filling of a sandwich in meats salted meat takes the lead in popular favor when sliced the meat should be cut across the grain and as thin as possible and several bits should be used in each sandwich unless a very small aesthetic sandwich be in order tongue and corned beef whether they be used in slices or finely chopped should be cooked until they are very tender when corned beef or ham is chopped for a filling the sandwich is much improved by a dash of mustard worcestershire or horseradish sauce improves a filling of roast beef or boiled tongue while chopped capers tomato sauce ketchup or cold mint sauce is appropriate in sandwiches made of lamb celery salt when the filling is of chicken or veal and lemon juice when the principal ingredient is fish are en rapport the flavor of a few drops of onion juice is relished by many in any kind of fish or meat sandwich while others would prefer a few grains of fine chopped parsley when salad sandwiches are to be prepared chop the meat or fish very fine and mix it with the salad dressing celery cabbage cress cucumbers tomatoes or olives may be chopped and added to the meat with the dressing when lettuce is used the leaf is served whole the edges just appearing outside the bread any one of these vegetables combined with a salad dressing makes a delicious sandwich without meat or fish when desired other well-prepared sauces may be used in the place of salad dressings fillings of uncooked fruit may be used but in the case of dried fruits it is preferable to stew until tender after the fruit has been finely chopped pineapple lemon or orange juice may be added at pleasure sandwiches prepared from entire wheat bread with fig or date fillings are particularly wholesome for the children's luncheon basket when a particularly aesthetic sandwich is desired wrap the butter that is to be used in spreading the bread in a napkin and put it overnight in a jar 
on a bed of violets or rose petals strew more flowers over the top and cover the jar tightly if meat or fish is to be used as the basis of the sandwich substitute nasturtium leaves and blossoms or sprigs of mignonette for the former flowers fancy butter makes an attractive filling for a sandwich it has also the merit of being less often in evidence than many another filling sandwiches except when vegetables and dressings are used may be prepared early in the day placed in a stone jar covered with a slightly dampened cloth and set away in a cool place until such time as they are wanted or they may be wrapped in paraffin paper still when convenient it is preferable to have everything in readiness and put the sandwiches together just before serving garnish the serving dish with parsley cress celery plumes slices of lemon barberries and leaves or fresh nasturtium leaves and blossoms beverages served with sandwiches coffee heads the list of beverages most acceptably served with sandwiches tea comes next cocoa and chocolate are admissible only with the dainty ascetic varieties in which fruit or some kind of sweetmeat is used end of section thirteen section fourteen of salads sandwiches and chafing dish dainties this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by betty b salad sandwiches and chafing dish dainties by janet mackenzie hill savory sandwiches hail wedded nourishment ham and tongue sandwiches chop two parts of cold tongue and one part of cold ham one fourth as much fat ham as lean very fine pound in a mortar and season with paprika and a little mixed mustard spread butter on one piece of bread the meat mixture on the other and press the two pieces together ham and egg sandwiches chop the ham and pound smooth in a mortar pass the yolks of hard-boiled eggs through a sieve mix the yolks with an equal amount of mayonnaise dressing butter one piece of bread lightly and spread with the ham spread the other piece with the egg and dressing and press the two together corned beef sandwiches chop the cold meat very fine using one-fourth of fat meat work into the meat french mustard or any made mustard to taste and prepare the sandwiches in the usual way boston brown bread combines well with this preparation tongue and veal or chicken sandwiches use a little less of the chopped tongue than of other kind of meat and one half as much chopped celery as meat mix with salad dressing spread one piece of bread with butter the other with the mixture and press together celery sandwiches chop crisp celery very fine and mix with salad dressing spread one piece of bread with butter the other with a thin layer of the mixture with a sharp knife split open the round stems of celery tips and put them between the bread so that the tips will just show on the edges tie with narrow ribbon light green in color sardine sandwiches use in bulk equal parts of yolks of well-cooked eggs rubbed to a smooth paste and the flesh of sardines freed from skin and bones and pounded in a mortar season to taste with a few drops of tabasco sauce and lemon juice and spread as usual crackers may be used in the place of bread if the sandwiches be prepared just before using otherwise the crackers lose their crispness garnish with slices of lemon and parsley caviar sandwich rolls to each two tablespoonfuls of caviar add ten drops of onion juice and a few drops of lemon juice and mix together thoroughly remove the crust from a fresh moist loaf of bread cut in thin slices spread each slice very delicately with butter and the caviar mixture roll up in a roll and tie with ribbon one-fourth an inch wide or pin with chinese toothpicks the bread should not be more than twelve hours old if fear be less the bread will not be sufficiently moist to roll wrap the loaf when taken from the oven in a damp cloth and then in a dry one keep in this fashion until ready for use russian sandwiches slightly butter thin slices of bread moisten fine chopped olives with mayonnaise dressing and spread upon the buttered slices spread other slices with neufchatel or any cream cheese and press together in pairs 
mushroom and lobster sandwiches saute the caps of half a pound of mushrooms in a little butter about five minutes adding half a sliced onion if desired cover with highly seasoned stock and let simmer until very tender chop and press through a sieve and if very moist reduce to the consistency of a thick puree add an equal quantity of lobster meat pounded smooth in a mortar season to taste with salt pepper lemon juice and if desired tomato ketchup when cool use as any filling cheese and english walnut sandwiches ingredients one quarter a pound of grated cheese one quarter a pound of butter one quarter a pound of english walnut meats sliced salt and paprika to taste method work the butter to a cream add the seasonings and the grated cheese gradually then mix in the nuts which should be sliced very thin spread the mixture upon bits of bread and press together in pairs particularly good made of brown bread and served with a simple vegetable salad egg and spinach sandwiches use cold boiled spinach which when hot was chopped very fine or pressed through a colander and sifted yolks of well-cooked eggs mix the spinach with sauce tartare and spread on one bit of bread spread the other with butter and sifted yolk of egg pressed together garnish the serving dish with parsley and cooked eggs cut in quarters lengthwise cress and egg sandwiches pick the leaves from fresh cress chop or break apart season with french dressing and proceed as above imitation pate de foie gras sandwiches chop half an onion and saute in a little butter when delicately brown add five or six chicken livers and saute them on both sides cover with well-seasoned chicken stock and let simmer until tender mash the livers fine with a wooden spoon and press them through a sieve season with salt paprika mustard or a dash of curry powder press into a cup pour melted butter over the top and set away in a cool place when ready to serve remove the butter and prepare the sandwiches after the usual manner chicken rolls ingredients four ounces from the breast of chicken one half a cup four ounces of braised tongue one half a teaspoonful of celery salt a few grains of cayenne one teaspoonful of anchovy paste four tablespoonfuls of mayonnaise or boiled dressing method chop the meat and pound to a paste in a mortar add the seasonings and mix well remove the crust from a loaf of moist bread cut in very thin slices trim each slice into a rectangular shape spread lightly with soft butter and then with the mixture roll the slices and tie them with ribbon omit the anchovy paste if desired epicurean sandwiches cream four tablespoonfuls of butter and one teaspoonful of mustard press the yolks of four hard-boiled eggs through a sieve and add them to the butter and mustard then add four boned anchovies four small pickles a teaspoonful of chives and a sprig of tarragon chopped together until fine cut stale bread in fingers or other fanciful shapes and spread with the mixture press two pieces together halibut and lettuce sandwiches put a pound and a half of halibut a slice of onion a stalk of celery four or five peppercorns one teaspoonful of salt and one tablespoonful of lemon juice in boiling water and cook just below the boiling point ten or fifteen minutes according to thickness remove bone and skin and rub the fish fine with a wooden spoon add half a cup of thick cream a teaspoonful of salt a dash of white pepper and one tablespoonful of lemon juice spread this mixture when cold on buttered slices of bread put a lettuce leaf above the mixture and spread a teaspoonful of mayonnaise or boiled salad dressing on the lettuce finish with a slice of buttered bread and tie with ribbon lobster fingers chop lobster meat very fine season to taste with french dressing cut the bread in pieces about four inches long and an inch and a half wide finish as usual garnish with parsley and the slender feelers of the lobster tower of babel pile a variety of sandwiches in form of a pyramid use bread of different colors arrange a garnish of parsley and radish rosebuds around the base and on the top a few sprigs of parsley or celery plumes nasturtium folds flavor the butter with nasturtium leaves and blossoms and with it spread a thin slice of moist bread 
which is longer one way than the other press fresh nasturtium leaves and blossoms upon the butter and fold one half over the other harlequin sandwiches spread a bit of brown bread with butter and french mustard and a bit of white bread cut to fit the former with butter and cheese cream together finish as usual harlequin sandwiches number two spread the brown bread with butter and cheese cream together and the white bread with butter then with cucumber chopped fine and seasoned with french dressing to which a few drops of onion juice have been added beet and cream cheese sandwiches spread one piece of bread with cream cheese the other with beets that have been chopped very fine and seasoned with french dressing peanut sandwiches chop freshly roasted peanuts very fine then pound in a mortar until smooth season with salt and moisten with thick cream peanut sandwiches number two mix the prepared peanuts with mayonnaise dressing butter two pieces of bread spread one with the peanut mixture the other with shredded lettuce and press the two together shad roe and yellow butter sandwiches ingredients one quarter a pound of butter sifted yolks of four eggs one set of shad roe cooked pounded in a mortar and sifted one half a teaspoonful of paprika four drops of tabasco sauce two teaspoonfuls of very fine chopped capers method cream the butter and add the other ingredients gradually prepare as usual green butter sandwiches ingredients one quarter a pound of butter one eighth a peck of spinach two tablespoonfuls of very fine chopped parsley six anchovies two teaspoonfuls of very fine chopped capers method boil the spinach drain thoroughly and press through a piece of muslin beat the butter to a cream with a wooden spoon beat into the butter enough of the spinach pulp to give the required tint of green wipe the oil from the anchovies remove the backbone and pass through a hair sieve then add to the colored butter a little at a time add also the parsley and capers chill slightly and use as a filling for sandwiches these butters are used also to mask or decorate cooked fish for cold service chicken salad sandwiches shoe paste boxes bake shoe paste in long slender shapes like eclairs but narrower and shorter when cold split apart on the ends and one side and fill with chicken salad put the top back in place after inserting a celery plume at each end garnish the serving dish with celery leaves and pimolas or olives serve other salads in the same way mosaic sandwiches cut the bread white brown and graham as thin as possible and use four or five pieces in each sandwich putting them together so that the colors will contrast either butter or other filling is admissible chicken and nut sandwiches chop fine the white meat of a cooked chicken and pound to a paste in a mortar season to taste with salt paprika oil and lemon juice and spread upon thin bits of bread spread other bits of bread corresponding in shape to the first with butter press into the butter english walnuts pecan nuts or almonds blanched and sliced very thin press corresponding pieces together aspic jelly for sandwiches soak one box two ounces of gelatin in one cup of cold chicken liquor until thoroughly softened add to three cups of chicken stock season with vegetables and sweet herbs according to directions previously given also the crust shell and white of one egg and proceed as for aspic jelly turn the liquid jelly into rectangular pans having it three-eighths of an inch or less in thickness and set aside in a cool place to harden when ready to serve dip the pan in hot water an instant and turn the jelly on to a paper with a thin sharp knife cut the jelly into squares or diamonds or dip a cutter into hot water and stamp out into hearts or clubs lobster sandwiches with aspic chop the lobster fine mix with mayonnaise dressing to taste spread upon a bit of aspic cover with a crisp lettuce leaf and above this place another piece of aspic spread with the lobster mixture serve at once halibut sandwiches with aspic after the aspic is poured into the pan sprinkle upon it some fine cut spanish pimentos when ready to serve prepare as lobster sandwiches with aspic 
using fish in the place of lobster and if desired sauce tartare in the place of mayonnaise shrimps salmon or other fish chicken veal tongue sweetbreads etc may be used either with lettuce or with chopped celery cress cucumbers etc or the vegetables may be used without either fish flesh or fowl club sandwiches steamer priscilla style have ready four triangular pieces of toasted bread spread with mayonnaise dressing cover two of these with lettuce lay thin slices of cold chicken white meat upon the lettuce over this arrange slices of broiled breakfast bacon then lettuce and cover with the other triangles of toast spread with mayonnaise trim neatly arrange on a plate and garnish with heart leaves of lettuce dipped in mayonnaise wedding sandwich rolls wrap bread as it is taken from the oven closely in a towel wrung out of cold water cover with several thicknesses of dry cloth and set aside about four hours then cut away the crust and with a thin sharp knife cut the loaf or loaves in slices as thin as possible and spread with butter and if desired thin shavings of meat potted meat or chopped nuts roll the slices very closely and pile on a serving dish the milwaukee sandwich ingredients two thin rounds of white bread one thin round of graham or rye bread four large oysters broiled or fried breast of cooked chicken or turkey two slices of crisp bacon horseradish lettuce four small sweet pickles four small radishes slice of lemon one tomato skin removed tartare sauce method dip the bread in beaten egg seasoned with salt and saute to a rich brown in hot butter roll the oysters in grated bread crumbs centre of the loaf and broil them or egg and bread them and fry in deep fat lay the first slice of bread on a plate over two or three lettuce leaves put the oysters on the bread a grating of horseradish on each oyster cover with the graham or rye bread on this lay the chicken or turkey cut in thin slices season with salt and pepper put on the bacon and cover with the other slice of bread on top of the sandwich lay a slice of lemon cut square and about this dispose the pickles and radishes to form a star serve the tomato on a lettuce leaf at the side cut out the hard centre from the tomato and fill the opening with sauce tartare in making the sauce add to mayonnaise or boiled dressing onion olives sweet pickles and celery chopped fine and squeeze dry in a cloth end of section fourteen section fifteen of salads sandwiches and chafing dish dainties this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by betty b salad sandwiches and chafing dish dainties by janet mackenzie hill sweet sandwiches in the name of the prophet figs horace smith fig sandwiches chop one-fourth of a pound of figs very fine add one-fourth a cup of water and cook to a smooth paste add also one-third a cup of almonds blanched chopped very fine and pounded to a paste with a little rose water also the juice of half a lemon when cold spread the mixture upon lady fingers or cakelets white or yellow press another above the mixture and serve upon a handsome doily covered plate raisins dates or marmalade may be used in the place of the figs the marmalade of course requires no cooking bread may be used in the place of the cake french fruit sandwiches chop the fruit very fine use a mixture of cherries plums pineapple and angelica root moisten with wine orange or lemon juice use lady fingers or bread for the covering if bread is used spread lightly with butter if cake be your choice spread very lightly with marmalade use just enough butter or marmalade to keep the coverings together date and ginger sandwiches chop the dates and preserved ginger moisten with syrup from the ginger jar and a little lemon juice cook as above and use with bread or lady fingers preserved ginger may be used alone and without cooking rose leaf sandwiches flavor the butter with rose petals according to the directions previously given spread both bits of bread lightly with it 
and put upon them three or four candied rose petals if lady fingers are used brush them over with white of egg and sugar mixed together use but little sugar just enough to hold the fingers together the turkish rose petals that come in little jars are particularly dainty and adapted to this purpose garnish the dish on which they are served with rose buds and leaves violet sandwiches prepare in the same manner as in the last number substituting candied violets for the rose petals and violets with green leaves for a garnish honey sandwiches spread one bit of white bread with honey pressed from the comb with a wooden spoon the other bit with butter garnish with white clover blossoms and leaves puff paste sandwiches roll puff paste very thin about one-eighth of an inch cut in fanciful shapes and bake to a delicate brown add chopped almonds to rich strawberry preserves or peach marmalade and spread the mixture between each two bits of pastry pineapple sandwiches ingredients one cup of pineapple juice and pulp three-fourths a cup of sugar juice of half a lemon lady fingers method cook the pineapple sugar and lemon juice until thick let cool and spread upon lady fingers or sponge drops press together in pairs and serve whipped cream sandwiches ingredients one cup of heavy cream one fourth a cup of powdered sugar one fourth a teaspoonful of vanilla extract lady fingers method add the sugar and extract to the cream and beat until solid let chill then spread quite thick upon lady fingers or sponge drops whipped cream sandwiches with french fruit soak half a cup of fine cut candied fruit in wine an hour or more prepare the cream as above and sprinkle the same with the fruit before putting the sandwiches together fruit jelly for sweet sandwiches ingredients one box of gelatin two ounces one cup of cold water one cup of boiling water one cup of sugar one and one half cups of orange juice one fourth a cup of lemon juice method soak the gelatin in the cold water and dissolve in the boiling water add the sugar and strain when cold add the orange and lemon juice mold in sheets three-eighths of an inch thick claret jelly for sweet sandwiches substitute claret for the orange juice and prepare as above do not omit the lemon juice fruit or claret jelly sandwiches with nuts slice blanched english walnuts and pecan nuts or almonds very thin and stir into whipped cream stamp out shapes from the jelly spread one piece with the cream and nuts and cover with a second piece of jelly with french fruit substitute candied fruit for the nuts and proceed as above or use nuts and fruit together cupid's butter sandwiches ingredients the yolks of four hard-boiled eggs one cup of butter one-third a cup of powdered sugar one teaspoonful of orange juice a grating of orange rind angel cakelets or slices of angel cake method cream the butter gradually add the yolks of eggs pass through a potato ricer or sieve the sugar and orange juice spread upon thin slices of angel cake prepared for sandwiches or upon angel cakelets or fingers press two slices together and serve at once if allowed to stand any length of time keep covered and in a cool place cheese and bar le duc currant sandwiches spread wheat bread prepared for sandwiches with cream cheese put two or three currants and a little syrup on each piece of bread and press two pieces together these may be varied by using sliced maraschino cherries either the currants or sliced cherries with a little of the syrup may be mixed with the cheese and then spread upon the bread bar le duc currants are imported from france in tiny glasses the seeds have been removed from the currants which are cooked in honey hunter's sandwich switzerland spread fresh bread cut in thin slices with fresh butter over this spread a layer of brie or other cream cheese and over the cheese spread a layer of honey press two similarly shaped pieces together and serve at once hunter's sandwich elwanger prepare as above substituting maple syrup or sugar for the honey end of section fifteen
section sixteen of salads sandwiches and chafing dish dainties this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by betty b salads sandwiches and chafing dish dainties by janet mackenzie hill bread and shoe paste she needeth least who needeth best these rules which we shall tell who needeth ill shall need them more than she who needeth well f f two loaves of wheat bread to two cups of scalded milk or boiled milk in a mixing bowl add two tablespoonfuls of sugar one teaspoonful of salt and when the liquid becomes lukewarm one yeast cake dissolved in half a cup of water boiled and cooled with a broad bladed knife cut and mix in enough well-dried flour sifted to make a stiff dough about seven cups knead until the dough is elastic cover and set to rise in a temperature of about seventy degrees fahrenheit when the dough is doubled in bulk cut down and knead slightly without removing from the mixing bowl when again double in bulk shape into two double loaves and set to rise in buttered pans when it has risen a third time bake one hour entire wheat bread use the preceding recipe without change other than in kind of flour and two additional tablespoonfuls of sugar rice bread add three-fourths a cup of rice cooked until tender and still hot and also two tablespoonfuls of butter to the milk or water in the first recipe other cereals as oatmeal or cerealine may be used instead of rice salad rolls make a sponge with one cup of milk one yeast cake dissolved in one-fourth a cup of milk and about one cup and a half of flour beat thoroughly cover and set to rise in a temperature of about seventy degrees fahrenheit when light add half a teaspoonful of salt one-fourth a cup of melted butter and flour enough to knead knead until elastic set to rise in a temperature of seventy degrees fahrenheit when doubled in bulk cut down and shape into small balls set to rise again covered with a cloth and a dripping pan when light press the handle of a small wooden spoon deeply across the centre of each ball brush with butter and press the edges together set the rolls close together in a baking pan after brushing over with butter the points of contact boston brown bread sift together one cup each of yellow corn meal rye meal and entire wheat flour one teaspoonful of salt and three teaspoonfuls of soda add three-fourths a cup of molasses and one pint of thick sour milk beat thoroughly and steam in a covered mould three hours and a half the quantity here given may be steamed in four baking powder boxes in two hours baking powder biscuit pass through the sieve two or three times four cups of flour one teaspoonful of salt and for each cup of flour two labelled teaspoonfuls of baking powder with the tips of the fingers work into the flour one-third a cup of butter when the mixture looks like meal mix in gradually nearly one pint of milk cutting the dough with a knife until well mixed when it is of a consistency to handle turn out on to a well-floured board toss with a knife in the flour then pat out into a sheet half an inch thick and cut into rounds let the heat of the oven be moderate at first and increase after the dough has risen bake about fifteen minutes sandwich biscuit prepare the dough as above roll to about three-eighths an inch in thickness and cut into rounds spread one half of these with softened butter and press the others unbuttered upon them bake fifteen or eighteen minutes pulled bread to serve with simple salads and cheese remove the crust from a fresh loaf of french bread gash the loaf at the ends and pull apart into halves then cut the halves and pull apart into quarters repeat until the pieces are about the thickness of breadsticks put on a rack in a dripping pan and dry out the moisture in a slow oven then brown delicately keep in a dry place a tin box is suitable and reheat in the oven before serving how to give rolls and bread a glossy brown crust a short time before removing from the oven brush over the top of each loaf or roll with beaten yolk of egg diluted with a little milk or with a little sugar dissolved in milk 
or with thin starch shoe paste put a saucepan with half a cup of butter and one cup of boiling water over the fire when the mixture boils beat into it one cup of flour when the dough cleaves from the sides of the saucepan turn into a bowl and beat in one at a time three large or four small eggs to boil salted meats ham tongue etc cover the meat with cold water and bring the water slowly to the boiling point let boil five minutes then slightly bubble until the meat is tender to boil chicken lamb and other fresh meat cover the meat with boiling water let boil rapidly five minutes then keep the water just below the boiling point or just quivering at one side of the saucepan until the meat is tender when the meat is about half cooked add a teaspoonful of salt for each quart of water potted meat and fish for sandwiches ingredients one pound of tender cooked meat or fish two cups two ounces of fat cooked meat one quarter a cup two ounces of butter one quarter a cup mace and anchovy essence if desired pepper and salt method chop the meat or fish very fine then pass through a puree sieve cream the butter and with a wooden spoon work it into the meat or fish add seasonings to taste press the mixture solidly into small jars or cups and pour melted butter to the depth of one-fourth an inch over the top of the meat set aside in a cool place kinds of meat and fish for potting ham fat and lean either chicken veal or tongue with bacon chicken and ham mixed fat ham chicken and tongue mixed with bacon veal and ham mixed with fat ham roast beef and corned beef mixed with fat of either or bacon thin and haddie and bacon salmon cod haddock bluefish etc with bacon or with double the amount of butter end of section sixteen section seventeen of salads sandwiches and chafing dish dainties this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by betty b salads sandwiches and chafing dish dainties by janet mackenzie hill beverages served with sandwiches towards eve there was tea a luxury due to matilda and ice fruit and coffee meredith's lucille come touch to your lips this melting sweetness sip of this nectar this java fine whose tawny drops hold more completeness than lurks in the depths of ruby wine j m l filtered coffee ingredients one half a cup of coffee ground very fine three cups of boiling water about six blocks of sugar about three tablespoonfuls of cream about six tablespoonfuls of hot milk method put the coffee into the filter of a well scalded coffee pot pour the boiling water over the coffee serve as soon as the infusion has dripped through the filter for black coffee use double the quantity of coffee boiled coffee ingredients one cup of ground coffee white and shell of one egg one cup of cold water six cups of boiling water one tablespoonful of ground coffee method beat the white and crushed shell of the egg and half the cup of cold water together mix with the coffee pour over the boiling water stir thoroughly and boil from three to five minutes with the nozzle tightly closed pour half a cup of cold water down the spout stir in one tablespoonful of coffee and let stand on the range without boiling ten minutes five o'clock tea ingredients tea candied ox heart cherries slices of lemon boiling water method fill the tea ball half full with tea put the ball into the cup with a cherry or a slice of lemon and pour boiling water over them remove the ball when the tea is of the desired strength rich chocolate ingredients four ounces of chocolate four tablespoonfuls of granulated sugar one fourth a cup of hot water one quart of scalded milk one teaspoonful of vanilla extract whites of three eggs one pint of thick cream one third a cup of powdered sugar method grate the chocolate 
add the granulated sugar and hot water and cook until smooth and glossy with a whisk beat in the hot milk very gradually and return to a double boiler to keep hot beat the cream until solid beat the whites of the eggs until dry then beat in the powdered sugar and fold the cream into the egg and sugar add half of the cream mixture to the chocolate with the vanilla and mix while the cream is heating serve the rest of the cream in spoonfuls upon the chocolate in the cups plain chocolate prepare as in preceding recipe omitting the cream mixture and such portion of the chocolate as is desired plain cocoa ingredients four teaspoonfuls of cocoa four teaspoonfuls of sugar one cup of boiling water one cup of hot milk whipped cream if desired method mix the cocoa and sugar pour over the boiling water and when boiling again add the hot milk beat the whipped cream into the hot cocoa or serve a spoonful upon the top of each cup salon cocoa scald a two-inch piece of paper bark cinnamon with the milk to be used in making the cocoa sultana cocoa stem and wash half a pound of sultana raisins let them stand covered with one quart of boiling water upon the back of the range an hour or more filter the water through folds of cheesecloth and use in making cocoa or chocolate egg lemonade ingredients one egg four tablespoonfuls of sugar juice of two lemons two cups of water method beat the egg until white and yolk are well mixed then beat in the sugar the lemon juice and the water fruit punch ingredients one pineapple four cups of sugar three cups of boiling water one cup of tea freshly made five lemons six oranges one pint of strawberry or grape juice one half a pint of maraschino cherries one bottle of apollinaris water six quarts of water method grate the pineapple add the boiling water and the sugar and boil fifteen minutes add the tea and strain into the punch bowl when cold add the fruit juice the cherries and the cold water a short time before serving add a piece of ice and on serving the apollinaris water strawberries mint leaves or slices of banana may be used in the place of the cherries punch a la nantes ingredients two pounds of rhubarb one pint of water one bay leaf one cup of sugar one cup of orange juice one fourth a cup of lemon juice one fourth a cup of ginger syrup method cut the rhubarb into pieces without peeling add the bay leaf and water and let simmer until the rhubarb is tender strain through a cheesecloth boil the juice with the sugar five minutes when cold add the orange and lemon juice with one-fourth a cup of syrup from a jar of preserved ginger and a piece of ice add water as needed homemade soda water ingredients two and one quarter pounds of granulated sugar one and three quarter ounces of tartaric acid one pint of water whites of three eggs one half an ounce of ginger extract one fourth a teaspoonful of bicarbonate of soda for each glass method boil the sugar water and tartaric acid five minutes when nearly cold beat into the syrup the whites of the eggs beaten until foamy and the flavoring extract store in a fruit jar closely covered to use put three tablespoonfuls into a glass half full of cold water stir in one-fourth a teaspoonful of soda and drink while effervescing a pint of any kind of fruit juice may displace the water when a teaspoonful of lemon juice should be added to the contents of each glass before stirring in the soda spanish chocolate to serve sixty ingredients six quarts of milk three blades of mace one five inch stick of cinnamon twelve cloves twenty pounded almonds one pound of chocolate three cups of sugar two quarts of boiling water yolks of three eggs method scald the milk with the spices and nuts break up the chocolate and melt over hot water add the sugar mix thoroughly then gradually stir in the boiling water let cook two or three minutes after all the water has been added then turn into the hot milk let stand over hot water until ready to serve then add the beaten yolks of eggs diluted with half a cup of water milk or cream and strain through a cheesecloth keep hot over hot water claret cup ingredients two quarts of claret one cup of sugar 
one cup of water five lemons cut in slices one dozen whole cloves two quarts of charged apollinaris or soda water one fourth a cup of brandy sherry or maraschino ice boil the sugar and water about six minutes let cool then add the lemon slices with seeds removed and the cloves let stand some hours in a cold place when ready to serve add the claret water and liqueur all chilled on ice put a piece of ice in the pitcher and pour over it the mixture the beverage should not be sweet end of section seventeen section eighteen of salad sandwiches and chafing dish dainties this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by kieran metz columbus ohio salads sandwiches and chafing dish dainties by janet mackenzie hill chafing dish dainties introduction chafing dishes past and present well he was an ingenious man that first found out eating and drinking swift how fire was discovered when it was first applied to the needs of human beings the origin and early use of cooking and heating utensils all are concealed from us in the mists that surround the life of prehistoric man but at the dawn of history even before the beginning of our era crude appliances for cooking were in use and without doubt one of the earliest of these was a utensil corresponding in some particulars at least to the chafing dish of today. The chafing dish is a portable utensil used upon the table either for cooking food or for keeping food hot after it has been cooked by other means. In ancient times, the fuel of the chafing dish was either live coals or olive oil. Today we use either electricity, gas, alcohol, or colonial spirits. The first chafing dishes of which historic mention is made consisted of a pan heated over a pot of burning oil, the pan resting upon a frame which held the pot of oil. It was with such a utensil, perhaps, that the Israelitish women cooked the locusts of Egypt and Palestine, for these were eaten as a common food by the people of the biblical lands and age. Momsen, in his History of Rome, while speaking of the extravagance of the times as shown in the table furnishings, probably refers to the chafing dish when he says a well-wrought bronze cooking machine came to cost more than an estate the idea that this might be the utensil referred to is strengthened by the fact that many chafing dishes have been found in the ruins of pompeii these were made of bronze and highly ornamented evidently olive oil was the fuel used in these dishes coming down to more modern times madame de stal had a dish of very unique pattern and when driven by the command of Napoleon from her beloved Paris, she carried her chafing dish with her into exile as one of her most cherished household goods. At the present day, among the favored few who have full purses, are found sets of little silver chafing dishes about four inches square. These tiny dishes rest upon a doily covered plate, and a bird or rarebit may be served in them as a course at dinner, one to each guest. The cooking is not done in these dishes, and they are not furnished with lamps. In them, the food, while it is being eaten, is simply kept hot by means of a tiny pan filled with hot water. In reality, the modern chafing dish is a species of bain-marie, or double boiler, with a lamp so arranged that cooking can be done without other appliances. It consists of four parts. The first is the blazer, or the pan in which the cooking is done. This is provided with a long handle. The second is the hot water pan, which corresponds to the lower part of the double boiler. This should be provided with handles and is a very inconvenient dish without them. The third is the frame upon which the hot water pan rests and in which the spirit lamp is set. The last, but by no means least part, is the lamp. This is provided with a cotton ore and asbestos wick. When the lamp has a cotton wick, the flame is regulated by turning the wick up or down as in an ordinary lamp. At present, this style of lamp is found only in the more expensive grades of dishes, silver-plated and costing from $15 upwards. When asbestos is used as the wick, the lamp is filled with this porous stone, which is to be saturated with alcohol immediately before using, and the top is covered with a wire netting. 
The flame is regulated by means of metal slides which open and shut over the netting, thus cutting off or letting on the flame as it is desired. Chafing Dish Appointments With all appliances and means to boot. Henry IV The chafing dish should always rest upon a tray as a very slight draft of air, or the expansion of the alcohol when heated, will sometimes cause the flame to flare out and downward, and thus an unprotected tablecloth might be set on fire. Often a cutlet dish is considered a necessary part of a chafing dish outfit, but as one of the chief merits of the chafing dish consists in the possibility of serving a repast the instant it is cooked, there would seem to be a want of propriety in removing the cooked article to a platter and garnishing the dish before serving. A polished wooden spoon, with long handle and small bowl, is a most convenient utensil to use while cooking the dainty, but the regulation chafing dish spoon is needed when serving the same. Such a spoon has a broad bowl of silver or aluminum with rounded end and a long ebony handle. The filler is a most convenient article for use when the lamp needs replenishing with alcohol, but in its absence the alcohol may be turned into a small pitcher and from that into the lamp. A lamp of the average size holds about five tablespoonfuls of alcohol, and this quantity will supply heat for at least half an hour. Glass, granite, or tin measuring cups, upon which thirds or quarters are indicated, also tea and tablespoons are essential for accurate measurements. Several items are essential to the successful serving of a meal from the chafing dish. To be a pronounced success, the work must be done noiselessly and gracefully. The preparation of all articles is the same for the chafing dish as for the common stove, but where the mixing is done at the table, as for a rarebit, the recipe takes on an additional flavor according to the deftness with which it is done. Let then everything be ready and at hand before the guests or family assemble at the table. Have the lamp filled and covered so that it may remain filled. Have all seasonings measured out in a cup. In case the yolks of eggs are to be used, they will not injure having been beaten beforehand, if they be kept covered. When oysters are to be served, have them washed, freed from bits of shell, drained, and left in a pitcher from which they can be readily poured. The quantity of butter used in the recipes is indicated by tablespoonfuls, and may be measured out beforehand and rolled into dainty balls with butter hands, a spoonful in each ball. Bear in mind that the hot water pan is to be used in all cases where the double boiler would be used if the cooking were to be done upon the range. For instance, where the recipe calls for milk or cream, except in the making of a sauce, use the bath from the beginning. Also, be careful always to place the blazer in the bath before eggs are added to any mixture. Indeed, the hot water pan is the one feature of the chafing dish which it is most important to notice, for on the proper use of the hot water pan, the value of the chafing dish as an exponent of scientific cookery entirely depends. She who well understands the principles upon which the use of this rests has gained no small insight into the secret of all cookery, be it scientific, economic, or hygienic. For a knowledge of the effect of heat at different temperatures applied to food is the very foundation stone upon which all cookery rests. Although the chafing dish is especially adapted to the needs of the bachelor, man, or maid, its use should not be relegated entirely to the homeless or the bohemian. In the sick room, at the luncheon table, on Sunday night, it is most serviceable and well-nigh indispensable. It always suggests hearty welcome and good cheer. While it is out of place at any ceremonial meal as a means of cooking, even on such occasions a lobster Newburg or other dish that needs to be served piping hot to be eaten at its best may be brought on in individual chafing dishes. These are supplied with hot water pans and lamps. At a chafing dish supper, each guest can prepare his own rarebit. Any operation in cooking that can be performed on the kitchen range may be successfully carried out on the chafing dish, provided one be skilled in its use. But, as the dining room is usually chosen as the site in which to test its possibilities, here it were well to confine one's efforts to such dishes as will not give rise to too much disorder. Sautéing and frying it were better to reserve for the range and a well-ventilated kitchen. Alcohol is most commonly used in the lamp of the chafing dish, and on account of its cheapness, one is often advised to buy wood alcohol. But in large markets, where many fowl are singed daily over an alcohol flame, 
The market men will tell you that the very best article is none too good for their purpose. It does not smoke, wastes less rapidly, and in the end, will prove quite as economical. Are midnight suppers hygienic? Being no further enemy to you than the constraint of hospitable zeal. In regard to the chafing dish and its most prominent use, someone may fittingly ask, is it hygienic to eat at midnight? Can one keep one's health and eat late suppers? As in all things pertaining to food, no set rules can be given to meet every case. Much depends upon constitutional traits, individual habits, and idiosyncrasies. One may practice what another cannot attempt. As a rule, however, people who eat a hearty dinner after the work of the day is done do not need to eat again until the following breakfast hour. Those who are engaged, either mentally or physically, throughout the evening cannot with impunity eat a very hearty meal previous to that effort, but after their work is done, they need nourishing food, and food that is both easily digested and assimilated. But even these should not eat and then immediately retire, for during sleep, all the bodily organs, including the stomach, become dormant. Food partaken at this hour is not properly taken care of, and in too many cases must be digested when the individual has awakened, out of sorts, the next morning. It is well to remember also that at any time after food is eaten, there should be a period of rest from all active effort, for then the blood flows from the other organs of the body to the stomach, and the work of digestion is begun. Oftentimes we hear men say they must smoke after meals, for unless they do so they cannot digest their food. They fail to see that it is not the tobacco that promotes digestion, but the enforced repose. But if we must eat at midnight, the question may well be asked, what shall we eat? That which can be digested and assimilated with the least effort on the part of the digestive organs. And among such things we may note oysters, eggs, and game, when these have been properly, that is, delicately cooked. How to make sauces. Let hunger move thy appetite, and not savory sauces. Babby's Book. Change is the sauce that sharpens appetite. As so many dishes are prepared in the chafing dish that require the use of a simple sauce, we give in this place the methods usually followed in the preparation of common sauces. For one cup of sauce, put two tablespoonfuls of butter into the blazer. Let the butter simply melt without coloring, if for a white sauce, but cook until brown for a brown sauce. Mix together two tablespoonfuls of flour, one-fourth a teaspoonful of salt, and a dash of black or white pepper, or a few grains of cayenne or paprika, and beat it into the bubbling butter. Let the mixture cook two to three minutes, then stir into it rather gradually at first, and beating constantly, one cup of cold milk, water, or stock. Now when the sauce boils up once, after all the liquid is in, it is ready for use. In making a white sauce, some cooks add from time to time, while the sauce is being stirred, a few drops of lemon juice, which they claim makes the sauce much whiter. Sometimes we make the sauce after another fashion, using the same proportions of the various ingredients. If water or stock be used, put it in the blazer directly over the fire. If the liquid be milk, put it into the blazer, and the blazer over hot water. Cream together the butter, flour, and seasonings, Dilute with a little of the hot liquid, pour into the remainder of the hot liquid, and stir constantly until the sauce thickens, and then occasionally for 10 or 15 minutes until the flour is thoroughly cooked. In making a brown sauce, first brown the butter, then brown the flour in the butter, and whenever it is convenient, use brown stock as the liquid. Ingredients for one cup of sauce. Two tablespoonfuls of butter, two tablespoonfuls of flour, one-fourth a teaspoonful of salt, a few grains of pepper, one cup of liquid. Ingredients for one pint of sauce. One-fourth a cup of butter, one-fourth a cup of flour, one-half a teaspoonful of salt, one-fourth a teaspoonful of pepper, one pint of liquid. Measuring. In all recipes where flour is used, unless otherwise stated, the flour is measured after sifting once. When flour is measured by cups, the cup is filled with a spoon and a level cupful is meant. 
a tablespoonful or teaspoonful of any designated material is a level spoonful of such material. Flavoring. When rich soup stock flavored with vegetables and sweet herbs is at hand for use in sauces, additional seasonings are not necessary. But when a sauce is made of milk, water, or water and meat extract, some flavor more or less pronounced is demanded. A few bits of onion and carrot browned in hot butter or anchovy sauce or curry may be added. But all things considered, the most convenient way to secure an appetizing flavor is by the use of kitchen bouquet. This alone, or in conjunction with a dash of some one of the many really good proprietary sauces on the market, is well nigh indispensable in chafing dish cookery. End of section 18. Recording by Kieran Metz. Section 19 of Salads, Sandwiches, and Chafing Dish Dainties. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kieran Metz, Columbus, Ohio. Salads, Sandwiches, and Chafing Dish Dainties by Janet Mackenzie Hill. Oyster Dishes. He was a bold man that first ate an oyster. Swift. Oysters. Put into the blazer 25 to 50 choice oysters. As soon as they are hot and look plump, add salt, pepper, and butter. Serve on buttered toast or crackers. Add two tablespoonfuls of cream or half a tablespoonful of lemon juice before serving, if desired. Oysters, number two. Ingredients. One pint of solid oysters. Four tablespoonfuls of butter. One tablespoonful of lemon juice. One scant teaspoonful of salt. A few grains of cayenne. Beaten yolks of two eggs. Method. Put the oysters into the blazer. When they look plump and the edges curl, put the blazer into the hot water pan and add the seasonings. Add a few spoonfuls of liquor from the pan to the yolks of the eggs and, after mixing well, pour into the chafing dish. Stir constantly until the liquor thickens. Then serve on thin slices of buttered toast or on thin crackers. Oysters a la Ducelle Ingredients 1 pint of parboiled and drained oysters 1 pint of oyster liquor or chicken stock 4 tablespoonfuls of butter 4 tablespoonfuls of chopped mushrooms 4 tablespoonfuls of flour A few drops of onion juice A few grains of cayenne 1 teaspoonful of salt one teaspoonful of lemon juice, yolks of two eggs. Method. Let the oysters be parboiled and drained beforehand. To parboil, heat quickly to the boiling point in their own liquor. Melt the butter in the blazer, add the flour, salt, and pepper, and cook till frothy. Add the oyster liquor or chicken stock and cook until the boiling point is reached. Now add the oysters, and, as soon as they are heated thoroughly, put the blazer into the bath and add the beaten yolks, the onion and lemon juice, and the mushrooms. As soon as the eggs thicken the sauce a little, serve on toast or crackers. If uncooked mushrooms are used, cook them in the butter two or three minutes before the flour and seasonings are added. Curried Oysters Ingredients 1 pint of oysters, parboiled and drained 1 half a cup of cream 2 tablespoonfuls of butter, 1 tablespoonful of flour, half a cup of oyster liquor, half a teaspoonful of curry powder, half a teaspoonful of chopped onion, 1 teaspoonful of salt, 1 salt spoonful of pepper. Method. Cook the onion and butter in the blazer a few moments. Mix the flour and curry powder and stir into the butter. When frothy, add the oyster liquor. As soon as the sauce boils up once, Add the salt, pepper, and cream, and, in a moment, the oysters. When the oysters are thoroughly heated, serve on buttered toast or crackers. Curried Oysters Number 2 Ingredients 1 quart of oysters 1 quarter a cup of butter 1 small, mild onion 1 teaspoonful of curry powder 1 quarter a cup of flour 1 cup of oyster liquor 1 cup of white stock one half a cup of thick tomato pulp, salt and pepper to taste. Method. Bring the oysters to the boiling point in their own liquor. 
skim, drain, and set aside. Heat the butter in the blazer, saute in it the onion, cut in slices, stir in the flour and curry powder mixed with the salt and pepper, and when frothy, add the oyster liquor, stock, and tomato pulp, a pint of pulp reduced by slow cooking to half a cup. When the sauce boils, add the oysters, and when hot, serve on buttered toast or fried bread. Fricassee of Oysters One quart of oysters, four tablespoonfuls of butter, yolks of two eggs, one half a teaspoonful of chopped parsley, one tablespoonful of flour, pepper, salt, cayenne. Method Brown the butter and add it to the parsley, seasonings, and flour. Let heat and add the well-drained oysters, and when the edges begin to curl, add the well-beaten yolks. Serve on warmed plates with fried bread and parsley. Creamed Dishes Oysters, shrimps, lobsters, sweetbreads, chicken, veal, fish, mushrooms, asparagus tips, peas, etc. Ingredients 2 tablespoonfuls of butter 4 tablespoonfuls of flour 2 salt spoonfuls of salt 2 cups of cream or 2 cups of milk and 4 tablespoonfuls of butter 1 salt spoonful of pepper 1 pint of fish, meat, etc. 2 tablespoonfuls of mushrooms, chopped or diced 1 teaspoonful of chopped parsley 1 teaspoonful of onion juice 1 tablespoonful of lemon juice Method Prepare the sauce in the usual manner. If oysters are used, they should have been parboiled previously and drained, and if large, cut in pieces. Fish should be flaked when hot, and meats cut into dice when cold. Deviled Dishes Season any of the cream dishes highly with cayenne, onion juice, mustard, and Worcestershire or other sauce. Scrambled Eggs with Oysters Cream together two tablespoonfuls of butter and one tablespoonful of anchovy paste. Melt in the blazer, then add half a dozen eggs beaten slightly with one-fourth a teaspoonful of salt and a dash of paprika. Stir and cook, and when beginning to thicken, add half a pint of oysters, parboiled, bearded, and cut fine. When scrambled, serve on snippets of toast lightly spread with anchovy paste. Panned Oysters with a fork pressed into a butter ball, rub over the bottom of the hot blazer. Then cover the surface with small rounds of toast and put one or two uncooked oysters on each round. Cover and cook until plump. Dust with salt and pepper and put a bit of butter on each oyster. Serve when the butter has melted with slices of lemon. Panned oysters with maitre d'hotel butter. Cook as before. Have ready two tablespoons full of butter beaten to a cream, add a few grains of salt and paprika, one tablespoon full of chopped parsley, and, by degrees, the juice of half a lemon. Spread upon the oysters before serving. Oyster Cromeskis Scald the oysters in their own liquor over a quick fire. When plump, wrap each oyster in a slice of bacon and fasten with a small skewer. Wooden toothpick. Sauté in the blazer, heated very hot. Serve on thin rounds of toast. These cremeskis are most easily cooked in a double broiler, resting on a dripping pan in a hot oven. Oysters sauté. Wash and drain the oysters, season with salt and pepper, roll in fine crumbs, dip in beaten egg, then roll in crumbs again. Put a little olive oil or clarified butter in the blazer. When it is heated, put in the oysters. Brown them on one side, turn, and brown on the other side. Oyster Canapes Scald a cup of cream, add two tablespoonfuls of fine grated breadcrumbs, a tablespoonful of butter, a dash of paprika, and a grating of nutmeg. Then add two dozen oysters, washed, drained, and chopped. Stir until the oysters are thoroughly heated, but without boiling the mixture. Spread rounds of toast with butter, and then with the oyster mixture. Serve at once accompanied by olives, pimolas, or gherkins. Escalloped oysters. Stir one cup of cracker crumbs into half a cup of melted butter. Heat half a cup of cream or strained oyster liquor in the blazer. Put in a layer of oysters, about a cup, washed and drained, 
and sprinkle with a part of the prepared crumbs, salt, and pepper. Add another layer of oysters, the rest of the crumbs, and salt and pepper. Cover and cook nearly 10 minutes. Do not stir the oysters. End of section 19. Recording by Kieran Metz, Columbus, Ohio.